Hello, I am Flor Dr. Florence Danila and I am a molecular biologist and microscopist. So I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the ANU, at ANU or the Australian National University and my work is, and I'm working for both the ARC Center of Excellence for Translational Photosynthesis as well as the C4 Rice project, um, both of which aim to improve crop performance and yield by improving photosynthesis or the way plants make food. So majority of my work involves um, the tiny structures in the leaf called plasmodesmata. So plasmodesmata are, um, as I mentioned, tiny structures in the leaf and they facilitate transport of sugars and gases between cells. So plasmodesmata are very tiny. So to imagine how tiny they are, I will have to analogize it with, our, with a strand of our hair. And it is actually 5,000 times smaller than a strand of our hair. And therefore, it needs to be imaged under a special microscope called electron microscope. So electron microscope um, use electron beam instead of light during imaging. And this kind of special um, imaging allows for far more higher magnification than a normal um, light microscope where we are um, mostly used to. So to imagine the difference between an electron microscope and a light microscope, so a light microscope can um, magnify an image up to below 2,000 times, but for an electron microscope, it can magnify up until 10 million times that what we can see with the naked eye. And for me, that's very important because dealing with plasmodesmata, I need that special kind of imaging that will allow me to see the structures that I'm interested with. With a light microscope, we're so used to um, specimen preparation such as slicing, thin section, staining, and then looking at it under the microscope. But for SEM, because of its um, special requirements such as the use of electron beam, we, need, we also need um, special sample preparation. And this special sample preparation includes coating the specimen with a thin metal such as platinum or gold, and this will avoid um, charging during the imaging process. So to show you an example of what an image, um, an electron microscope can produce, so here is an image of a um, rice leaf under a, a scanning electron microscope, where here I, can, I am showing you um, a junction between two cells in the rice leaf, and this junction is where the plasmodesmata are normally found. And in this um, image, you can see that the magnification is up is 66,000 times than what we can see with the naked eye. And for me, that's really important because um, more, most of my work involves quant quantifying these structures. And for me to be able to see this um, clear, highly re resolved structure uh, image is very important. And here you can immediately see that we can count them easily and for this image these structures here were, which are like like a target um, you can see that here for for instance in this image we can see a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten structures which is really important for me because I'm working on comparison between a kind of um, photosynthetic types such as C3 and C4 where C4 is more photosynthetically efficient than C3 and therefore I need to compare whether in terms of um, communication between the cells one is higher than the other and for my work um, what I found is that the C4 um, plants or C4 leaves which are um, far more efficient than C3 leaf they have more of these communication channels between their cells and therefore we can say that because of this um, increase in communica communication channels between this leaf, it also improved the way they produce food. And indeed, in terms of their yield difference, C4 plants uh, produce more um, food in, term in tons per meter, in, in, t in tons per hectare, than C C3 plants. So an example of C4 plants would be maize, and an example of um, C3 plants would be rice.